everybody, it's Christy back with another video and today we are going to do four easy spring watercolors that you could make into cards. So I am going to go through four different ideas that I came up with that I think would make really fun cards that could be used in multiple different ways and um, are really easy to paint. So I know I used to be a card maker and I used to do a lot of paper crafting with die cuts and stamps. And as I've gotten more into watercolor, I find that I really like the opportunity to color or paint something that can go on a card. And so I know I did a Valentine's one and I thought it would be fun to maybe kind of make this into a series where we are painting some easy paintings that you could either just paint as a painting or you could turn into a card. So I have my paper. This is a seven by 10 block of Legion aqua cold press paper and I have it divided up into four sections. I do have thicker tape on the top and bottom just because the, the page is 10 inches by seven inches. So I wanted to, um, for a card, if you're going to make a card out of this, you want something that's going to fit on an A6 card nicely. Well, a card isn't necessarily A6. Uh, the sizing of a card when you make a card usually is five and a half by four and a quarter because that is a quarter of a sheet of cardstock. So this is just going to make the sizing a little bit nicer. I didn't really measure except to put lines down the middle so that I made sure I had four equal pieces. And we are going to do, some of these are a little bit of a spoiler of the shape. We are going to do a bunny rabbit. We're going to do an umbrella and then two ideas over here that I don't have drawn because they're just kind of going to be something we do as we do it. So supplies for today. I had a sketching pencil. It was just a normal old sketching pencil that I grabbed off my desk. And I've got three brushes. I don't know if I'll use them all, but I have around six from Princeton, around four from King Art, and a flat wash, uh, short flat six from Rosemary and Company. And then I have my paint palette here that I use all the time. This is my one that's got my artist grade paints in it. There's some Sennelier in here. There's some My Mary Blue in here. And there is some Daniel Smith in here. Those are the main three. I don't think I have anybody else in this palette. And then I'm also going to later on in the video get out my Paul Rubens metallic palette and use some metallic watercolors for two of these video or two of these cards. So the two bottom ones will have some metallic elements to them. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, oh, and sorry, this is important for the bunny. Um, I'm using Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White. You could also use some white gouache. If you have it, I would do fresh from the tube white gouache. I think Copic um, white ink would work here too, but you definitely want an opaque white medium for what we're going to do for the bunny rabbit over here. So let's start with this upper left card here. I'm going to do some tulips, some loose tulips here. So I'm going to use a red color. I think I want my alizarin crimson for this. Let's just get a little bit of it swatched out on the palette, and I might need to clean some of this palette up because it is getting messy over here. So let's make a spot in this middle well that's cleaner. Normally I just mix my colors together, but I want a pretty specific red situation here. All right, so I actually went ahead and I sprayed my paints a little bit. I sprayed off my palette and I think I'm gonna go for maybe a pinker color. So I've got some nice pinks over here. Let's see what these guys look like. I think maybe this guy here, which is my Daniel Swift Quinacridone Rose. Yeah, I like that for tulips. We can do like a pinky color. I did red in my test, but I think I like this pink. All right, so for tulip shapes, I'm gonna do a very loose tulip here. This is something that I have seen other artists do as well. But I'm just going to do a basic C curve that I make like a little bit bigger. And then on the other side of it, I'm going to do a smaller C curve like that. So just really basic tulip shape like that. It kind of likes, looks like it's a tulip with an open, but it almost looks like it could be like a loose rose that's opening. So that's kind of the shape I'm going for here like that. And I'm just going to do a bunch of those on here. We're going to do some up here, and then I might grab my smaller brush to do a few smaller ones. 
like that. Let's go down this way and do a few bigger ones. We're just trying to get some pretty tulip shapes on the page like that. And yeah, I'm gonna grab my smaller brush now and do just a couple with the smaller brush. And here in the middle. And I made that one a little bit lighter. One up here. That one's actually a little smaller, good. Maybe one up here that's a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I think that's good. I don't think I want too many more. I can always go back and add them. It's going to be hard to subtract them. Now I'm going to take my sap green color here. And I'm going to put it on my palette. I don't quite want something this sappy. I would like it to be a little bit more spring-like. I'm going to first add, I think this is... Which color here? This is permanent green from Daniel Smith right here that I'm going to add to this to see if I can brighten it just a little bit. I like that. There we go. It's kind of a springy green. You could make it a little bit more yellow if you wanted to, but I kind of like that color. And I'm just going to put some basic stems on here. I, again, really simple for this beginning step. And just wanting something that's a loose floral card that just about anybody could do. This is one of the first kinds of floral cards that I did. The stems are going to look a little bit like thick and out of place for now, but we are going to fix that in a minute with some leaves. As we get up here, you're going to want to try to make your stems come down underneath without disrupting and you want to leave some white space on the tops of these flowers because we are going to add a little bit of yellow like the way that a tulip has the open part of it. I originally did these in a vase and then I just thought you know what it would actually look really pretty if we just did stems like this. Okay now the bottom of the tulips I'm going to make just a little bit more of this green color because I really want to have some fun here and I don't want to have to make more paint. Okay, so I'm going to take and we are just going to make a very long, thin leaf. So it's going to be a lot of pressure and then at the end you're just going to pull it up and you could even pull it up a little bit more than that, like that. Okay, and you're going to do that on each flower a couple of times and you are going to get some overlapping here and that's okay. You kind of want there to be some really pretty overlapping. So this one's going to kind of come up this way. I'm going to do one coming off of this flower. I'm trying to start at the bottom so I can fill in appropriately as I go. Like that. So this guy here, I might do one that kind of like peters off like that. You could do ones that kind of go up and then like curve down a little bit. It's kind of pretty. The goal here is just to get some really long and flat leaves kind of like coming through and curving in here. Okay, who else needs leaves? This guy here doesn't have any leaves, so we'll do one like that. Maybe we'll do one that comes all the way up over here. Went over that one a little bit, that's okay. And then something that comes up like that. Maybe something that goes like that. So we're just kind of getting some basic leaf shapes. We could even do some that just kind of just come out of nowhere and go from nowhere at the bottom here. Kind of pretty. Just fill it in a little bit more. Okay, so we don't want to go too crazy. That looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do over here is I am going to get my yellow. I'm going to use this like, I think it's a cad. It's a new gamboge from Daniel Smith. And I'm just going to do some little flicks inside of each of these flowers in the middle, kind of like hinting at some buds. Okay. 
And that's it. So I am going to go back and make a sentiment for that later if you want to make it into a card. But this is a great beginner place to just do some florals and find some different, like the, with the different brush strokes, this is a really great exercise, if nothing else. So that is the tulip card. All right, next one over here we're going to do is the bunny. So I just went ahead and drew the bunny in. When I drew my bunny, I did some big circle shapes. I did the ears and some little feet. And I'm just going to go in with my eraser and kind of erase the lines that are not my outline now. You could do this with a water soluble, like a watercolor pencil, and it would just dissolve underneath because I'm going to paint my bunny gray. If you wanted to, you could do your bunny in like a um, like a brown color, that would be fine. Or you could do like a pastel color if you wanted to do something a little bit cute or different that's non-traditional. So I'm just gonna erase the lines I don't need. I can leave the outline for the purpose of what we're gonna do here. Just erase where the neck and the body meet. Because this is the back of the bunny. We're gonna kind of see his back. So I'm going to use my little light gray color here from Sennelier, but you could use any gray color. You could mix a gray color. You could use a Payne's gray that you just dry down. But I really like this like blue gray color. I think it's really pretty bunny color. And we're just going to fill it in. Oh, and then we're going to leave a white space here in the middle for the tail. I'm just going to fill him out here. Give me a decent sized circle there for the tail. Fill that foot out a little bit better. But I just think a cute little bunny would look nice. And this paint's going to granulate a little bit, which I think is going to make him look a little bit fuzzy. And I think that's cute. Certainly won't matter, and you can do it without doing that. Do the ears up here. go. So, yeah, we're just going to finish painting him out. Super cute little bunny here. And we're going to add a nice sentiment to some of these cards. here. There we go. So now we are going to let this dry just a little bit before we jump in to doing the next stage of it. Not a lot. You want it to still be wet, but you want it to be a little bit dry and you want to make sure your brush is totally cleaned off. And I'm actually going to use the smaller brush for this next step because I want some water control, better water control. <clears throat> and what I am going to do is I'm going to take my bleed proof white now and I am going to make the tail look like a little fuzz ball. So I'm going to do that by loading my brush up with my bleed proof white and going into the center of the tail here. And I am just going to touch the outside of the tail here and make it look like that. And what that's going to do is make the outside edge of the tail look fluffy. Like that. So we've got and I'm going to add a little bit more water to my white 
really go in here and try to get these edges to make it bleed just a tiny bit. You don't want it to bleed a ton, but you do want it to just look a little bit like a fluffy fluff ball on the butt. There we go. There we go. All right, and we're gonna let that one dry a little bit. While that one is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint my umbrella down here. So I've got a cute idea for this one. Again, I just drew a general umbrella shape, nothing fancy. Um, and then I put an umbrella hook in it so that we're gonna have a nice little umbrella here. I am going to paint this, it's springtime, so maybe we will do this purpley color. I think this is a cobalt violet. This is Sennelier's cobalt violet light hue, so it's not actually a cobalt color. So we'll use that color here. And again, just gonna fill it in. A lot of this is not terribly complicated. Just going to kind of do some neat techniques. Up there, we just did the wet on wet tail. Here we're going to do some metallic on top and then we got some rain that we're gonna put into this picture, which is gonna look really cool. And I'm still using my round four brush. I think my round four is a good size for this particular application. And you can use any watercolor paper that you want for this. I do like the Legion Aqua Cold Press because it gives me a little bit of time to make sure I don't get weird bleeding because I'm going to have a nice wet page the whole time. So I can kind of maneuver things the way that I want. I might even just do, that's not going to do anything. I was going to say I could do some lines here going up and to, but you can't really see that. All right, so we're going to let those guys dry. And while those guys are drying, I am going to switch gears and get some metallic watercolors out to show you what we're going to do over here. All right, so this bubble tutorial has been done by a lot of people before. So it's not necessarily something you haven't seen before, but I'm just going to find a pretty color palette for my bubbles. I'm going to do blue and green and pink, I think. And I'm just going to, on this well right here, I'm going to lay as much pigment down as I can for these three colors. trying right now to keep them separated. I could be using a bigger brush to do this, but I think we're okay. And then maybe we'll do this green color here. There we go. I feel like we need more purple. That's better. Get some more green. Okay. So now we're gonna take some lids. I have a couple lids here. I have the lid to the bleed proof white and I'm gonna take this cap to a water bottle. And I'm just gonna kind of toss them in here, get some paint on the lid <laughs> and not drop it like that. And then I'm just gonna stamp it down on my paper like that. Pick it up. Okay, it doesn't have to go the whole way. That's okay. And then I'm gonna do it again. Same kind of thing. And I'm gonna maybe do it down here this time. 
it can go off the paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then maybe one more. No, maybe I won't do any more big ones on this one. I'm going to do some smaller ones. If I could hold on to the caps, that would be good. So we're going to do that. Just place it here. There we go. And then here. And then maybe we'll do one more that is down here. All right, so let's start with that and see how this looks. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush with clean water on it, and I am just going to touch the inside of the brush with clean water and let the bubble do its magic. And it's looking like maybe it's needing a little bit of help here. So I'm just going to touch the edge a little bit with some color. Same thing here with the purple. And then we're just going to let it go. All right, up here, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to do a lot of water inside the bubble, making sure you use clean water, making sure you pick up along the edge and bleed it out. And then I'm just going to take some of the additional color and kind of help the edge a little bit there. That. here same thing and then just make sure you leave a space <clears throat> where it's white try to have your white space be kind of in the same spot on all of your bubbles you kind of want that idea there all right so we're just going to repeat that process for all of the bubbles that we have and I'm going to wait for these ones to dry to go in and do the other ones here. So we've got this purple color that we made by mixing the blue by mixing the magenta and the pink. So I'm just gonna mix those together, or the magenta and the green. It's giving me this really neat purple. We're gonna get that going. Add some blue to it maybe. And then over here, we're going to do the same kind of thing. I still have, this one's pretty wet. This one seems a little drier. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this one with my water. And we're going to do purple up along here, some blue down along here, some green there, and then just really let the water kind of let it play 
like that. Cool. And we have one more here. Just tapping some color on the edges of these bubbles. And it's okay that the ones underneath each other kind of look blurry. I think that's a fun effect. Just want different levels of pigment at different places to kind of illustrate how a bubble would look. And then I'm going to just do some random smaller shaped bubbles by hand. Like that. We have a spot up here where we've got some water already naturally having fallen. Just tap some color around that one. Maybe add a different color to a different side of it. Like that. And then down here, maybe one right here. And just very much not thinking too hard, just adding color different spots and kind of letting it do its thing. like that. Okay, so now I think on this one, we want to go ahead and we want to cover these guys up here up so that we can do a little bit of splattering, I think would be fun. All right, so now we covered everything that isn't the bubbles and now we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to actually take my bigger brush here and I am going to dip it in each color individually to really get some color and some water on the brush. And then I'm just going to take the handle of another brush and do some splatters. We'll do green next. Again, just really trying to get a wet brush. These are a little bigger. That's nice to have different sizes. And then finally, we'll do a little bit of purple. And that's, that's the plan here. Now we will maybe go through and just wet up some of these again a little bit so that they're not quite so splattered. But you do want a little bit of that texture on the inside. It's kind of fun. And again, it's just for fun. This is all just, I think, fun. Text adding texture overall to your bubbles. That one had a little bit of a, we need to add a little bit there and to the outside too. 
we were not quite as good as we could have been there. Okay. And I am going to go through and just take my bleed proof white and give some really nice white swipes now that we kind of know where all of our color was going to go here. We can take these off too. So we can do like some nice white swipes in our bubbles. Maybe even adding a little bit of white in some other unique places. And yet, once that dries, we can get a little bit more going with that. Now, over here with my umbrella, I was thinking that I would do maybe even the same color over here or this pinky color, but I just wanted to do some stripes or something on the umbrella, but I think stripes would look really neat. So let's go ahead in with a, I think the same color that I've been using. It's a favorite color of mine in this Paul Rubens palette. And we're just going to do some nice big swipes right towards the post of the umbrella up like that to give it some extra added fun. Like that. Again, nothing too crazy or serious, just a nice little add of metallic pop to the final piece. Just like that. Hopefully that will dry down and give us some nice metallic color. Adding a little bit more here because who doesn't love a little shine? And once you have the wet stripes, you can just go back in and adjust them. Okay, so we're going to let all of that dry and then we're going to come back and we will talk about what we're going to do for this one and anything else that we need to fix. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we finished with the metallic paints. Look how cool those bubbles look. I just think they're so neat. And then I did go ahead and put a silver stripe on my umbrella just for some fun. It's not, you know, anything too serious. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a mask and we are going to make some rain on this picture with the umbrella. So I just have a piece of notebook paper here and my goal is just to set it so that I can see well enough to trace out around the umbrella. Like a basic shape that matches it. Doesn't have to be too serious. And then we're going to go down the page like that as much as possible. And then we're just going to trim it out. So I'm just going to trim. I'll come down so that I make sure I don't go too far up. And I'm just going to trim this guy. Again, we're just trying to create a mask because what we want is for there to not be anything underneath the umbrella. And it's okay if it's a little bit over the umbrella, but I really don't want anything under it. And I want us to be able to splatter rain everywhere else. So let's bring back the other things I was using as rain shields for the top, for splatter shields, and for the side here. And now we are going to do some rain splashes. So I think for rain that my phthalo blue is going to be good. And I've got this little pile of turquoise here. So I'm actually just going to mix that all up and make this like kind of pretty cerulean blue color. And I want my brush to be very wet so that my rain is kind of thick and juicy drops. So even that seems... A little small I'll do the smaller ones and then I'm gonna try to get some bigger splatters in there too 
So let me use a brush that's got a brush that's got a bigger belly here. And I'm gonna pick up more water and then try to do some bigger splashes like that. And then maybe even just take my finger. That's gonna create two small of splashes. I really want some bigger splatters on here than that. So like some bigger dots like that. So I'm just gonna maybe grab same colors again, make myself a bigger pool of color like that. Get a bunch of water in there. Okay. And then just do some bigger rain. Try to make them look like splashes. And I want to make sure I get some down along the sides of my umbrella a little bit. Nothing too serious, but like just a little bit down along the sides. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. Maybe I'll add a little more. There we go. I'm making a mess. That's part of the fun, right? Make a mess. So now when we pull this away, we should hopefully have some pretty nice big raindrops all over the place. Wipe this off so I don't end up with water everywhere. And I may even, no, I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna let it dry. So we're gonna be patient and we're gonna let it dry so that we can see that it looks like rain and the umbrella is shielding us from the rain before we finish our idea for that one. All right, take three and really hoping this works because I don't wanna have to film it again. I just used one of my fountain pens to put in the handle on this little umbrella. I did a sparkly color because I thought that would look cute and I did the little posts on the umbrella. So that's all I did there. It was really, really simple. And now all I'm going to do for this piece, this is the only one I'm writing a sentiment on right now. And then I'm gonna cut the rest of them out and make cards and I'll show you how I would do different sentiments. But this sentiment is going to say, we're just gonna write it in block letters because I want to. We will weather the storm together. And that's that. We will weather the storm together. That's a cute little umbrella. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these card bases out and I will show you how I would put them on an actual card and how I would add sentiments for some of these others. All right, so I almost forgot on the bunny. I wanted to do a little bit of, I wanted to do a little bit of greenery at the bottom. So we're just gonna do that real quick and we'll let it dry and it'll be the last card we put together. But I was just gonna take some sappy green. I can even use this green from earlier add a little sap to it. Um, maybe go just a little bit darker with it. I have my perline green here. I can add a little bit of that to it. There, I like that color. It's like an olivey color. And I'm just gonna kinda do a little hint of grass down here for where the bunny is standing. And then I'm just gonna do some little sprigs. I just thought it would be cute to have some grass down here by the bunny's feet. You know, to show that there's some greenery coming 
because spring is here. Okay, that was it. I was just going to do a little bit of that um, by the bunny's feet. I forgot to do that earlier. So here is the finished bunny piece now, and I think we've got that one all ready to go. This one needs a little bit of erasing underneath here. So we're just going to, now that it's all dried, we'll hit it with a eraser to make sure that that's all good. And we will weather the storm together. And we are going to put that on a card base. We've got some tulips and we'll add a sentiment to this one in a little bit. And you could cut it closer. I did leave a little bit of an edge on all of mine. And when I cut it, I kind of got a little deckled effect. So I left that too because I thought that looked neat. And then we have our bubbles. So I'll start with the bubbles one. I'm going to put this one on black. And I'm thinking that I'm going to put it a little bit higher so that I can just write the sentiment down here. I think that's how I would like to position this card. I'm going to grab some glue tape. This is not my normal roll of glue tape, but it is the one that's on my desk right now. So we're going to use it. Let me go ahead and move my paint. Okay. So we can get going here. Maybe. Am I using it backwards? Yep, this one goes backwards from what I would normally have thought. I am a pretty aggressive glue taper when it comes to cards. It is just because of me being me. Now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to trim this one down. So I'm going to put it here and then trim this piece off. Make sure it's even. And then I'll take my paper trimmer wherever it got to. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Again, these are handmade items. I don't need it to be perfect, but I am going to cut it down so that we've got about the same distance on both sides. So I'm just going to do that and then run it through here. And there we go. That looks to me nicer. It'll still fit inside of the envelope that I have for it, but I think it's going to look really cool. So now what I'm going to write underneath with a white gel pen is a sentiment about popping. You could do popping. I'm going to do popping in to say hi. Or popping in to, well, now this gel pen doesn't want to work. <laughs> Hold, please. Okay, so I just decided that instead of writing with a white gel pen, I went ahead and I got rid of that. You can usually get white gel pen off pretty easily. I just wrote it on a little piece of leftover watercolor paper here. It says popping in to say hello, and I'm just going to stick it right under here like this. I'm going to go ahead and glue tape that on there, and I think that'll be cute, and it will do what I wanted it to do. Sometimes I guess you can't rely on the white gel pen. So see, when we are crafting, we have to be flexible. So let's make sure this is lined up. And in you go. And you don't have to make these into card bases. You could have put that right on the watercolor paper, folded your watercolor paper, and had a card. I just always have card bases, and I think that looks so cute. So popping in to say hello is a little card, and it's got these really shiny bubbles on it. Super fun. All right, this one is also going to have a pun of sorts. So we are going to write Hoppy Spring on this one. <laughs> Hoppy Spring. So we're going to go ahead and tape that one up. I like the craft paper here for this one. I think that's really, really pretty. I keep holding this the wrong way because my Tombow tape roller would fit the opposite way into my hand. I know I overdo it with my glue tape. I always do. Always have and always will, I think. So you could make this an Easter card. You could write Hoppy Easter on it. 
you could write hopping in to say hello, um, hopping by to think of you, you know, anything with hopping because, well, bunny rabbit. All right, so let's go ahead and try to write Hoppy Spring here. H-O-P-P-Y-S-P-R-I-N-G. And now let's see if I can make this look a little bit nicer with downstrokes being highlighted like that. That's cute. And then over here we've got spring. So downstroke. You can tell that I don't do this very often. And then downstroke here and then downstroke here. And that like that. So that's not bad. Hoppy spring. And if you wanted to, you could put it in quotes. Hoppy spring like that because it's meant to be cheeky. But there is that card finished. And I think that's just really simple and cute and like little bunny butt. I just, I just think that's really cute. All right. And then we've got two more. We will weather the storm together is pretty much ready to go. That one we can just put right in the center of this card. And I think that would make a really nice presentation. So let's go ahead and do that one. And then we'll finish up with the tulips. So there's that one on a black card base. And you could do different colors. I just, I like, I like the black contrast with the white. And then this one we're going to put on pink because I think it looks really nice on pink. Okay. And you could write thinking of you on this one. We could even do this one a little bit differently. Maybe we'll foam tape up. No, we won't, because if you want to mail them, you don't want to use foam tape. Um, that's something I learned a long time ago in my old days as a card maker. Way too much glue there, guys. Way too much. But, you know, once I start, I can't stop. I'm actually going to do it on this side this time, just because. Okay, and then we're going to trim the other side here. So I actually have from Simon Says Stamp years ago these sentiment strips that you can just cut out and put on here, and there's so many good ones. This one is all about being celebrating and congratulations kind of things. This is a congratulations on engagement, weddings. This one's just a hello one, which is really cool. And then sending you a paper hug. So I like that. I like sending you a paper hug. So we're going to use that one. Or maybe be gentle to yourself. You're doing great. Actually, I really like that one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut that out. And I'm going to put it on the bottom there. So if this is, your, this is something you would like to do. Yeah, I bought these from Simon Says Stamp like many years ago at this point, I would say. But I just think that it's a great way to have a bunch of little sentiments around if you don't like to do the writing, which you guys can tell that that's not my favorite thing to do. So we can put it here. I think it looks good there. I might need to cut it, trim it a little up. So we'll do this. I'm going to trim this just a little bit on the edge. I'm just going to use my scissors. And let's see here. Be gentle to yourself. You are doing great. I love that. We could put it over the lily. I keep going back to that, but I think it's just a little bit long to do that with, so I'm going to do it down here. And I think a card of encouragement is always such a nice thing to receive. You cannot make up the niceness of getting a handmade card in the mail. So 
Okay, let's bring them back now. We've got four really beautiful spring cards here that we were able to create. So we've got Poppin' in to say hello. We've got Be Gentle to Yourself, You're Doing Great. Poppy Spring. And we will weather the storm together. So there they are, guys. I hope that you had fun with this. Um, let me know if you like this in the comments today because it is something that is a little outside my comfort zone to do, me being the tutorial person. And so I'm trying to get better at it. I hope that you will be gentle with me in the comments about it. But I hope that this is fun for you to kind of see some different ideas about ways that you can do something quick with watercolor that would be fun. Any of these ideas could be replicated. So you could have done four bunnies. You could have done four of any of these designs instead of doing a bunch of different ones if you wanted to make a bunch of cards and send them out. Or, you know, this is four different ideas and designs that you could kind of use over and over again. And some of these could be used different times of the year as well. So keep that in mind. But which of these is your favorite design? Which one are you most excited to try on your own? Let me know that in the comments below. And that's going to be it for me today. I hope that this inspires you to make and send someone a greeting card today. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.